now. So, um, if you guys have any questions about what we did yesterday, please let me know. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead with that. So, yeah. Okay, fine. So, the next thing we're going to do is that the question is, how do we determine the direction of field lines using a compass now using a plotting compass in fact let's write that so this is an experiment what you're going to do is you need some apparatus we need a plotting compass of course we need um, a3 size sheet we need a permanent magnet okay so this is a plotting sheet I like to have hello what is it? Uh, sir, can I call you back in a bit, sir? Yeah, sure. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, so then <coughs> you, have, you place a, a, a permanent magnet in the center. Then when you place a plotting compass, right, like this, let's make it with a different color. Maybe this one. Okay. Near north, the compass is going to point the needle or it's north away from this like this and then what you do is you put a dot and then the next one you place the compass exactly on the top and then you can plot the next dot so you keep on doing that wherever the compass basically is trying to take you and ultimately you will see many many dots and you can you know do it for other directions as well and then what you can do is you can trace the dots follow the direction of the compass and it's going to give you the direction of magnetic field is it clear to everyone so what you're going to do is place a magnet at the center of the sheet and now put the compass near north of magnet and Put a dot where ever the needle points. All right. Then what you want to do is place the compass on the mark dot and repeat until we reach the south pole finally connect dots using a smooth line and this will show the magnetic field all right repeat for other lines from 
different points. Is it clear everyone? Okay, any questions please let me know, everyone. So, yeah. Najaf, is everything clear? Najaf, you were not there yesterday, right? Yes, I was yesterday's class. Okay. Yeah, I was Okay, you got to watch the recording then. Uh, Yusef? Okay, do you understand everything? Moiz, Shawiz, Anaya? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you guys have written this. Should I go on then? Yes, sir. All right. Now, the next question that we need to answer is how magnetic field pattern is shown by iron filings. Iron filings are basically like pieces of small piece of iron. Again, what you're going to do is I'm going to show you a picture of this and then I'm going to explain this to you so that in case the examiner asks you should know just a second please okay like powder iron like that yeah coffee this looks pretty good this looks oh this is too small for us never mind let's make it bigger so you guys can see now <coughs> so what you're going to do is Right, that as the iron filings, what else? One L are scattered. Around the magnet, they tend to become temporary. magnets by magnetic induction all right and line up end to end like that the 
the clamp together around the poles of the magnet indicating that magnetic field is strongest at that at those points okay that's not fair strongest at those points as you can see from the diagram itself this region and this region is the strongest magnetic field whereas this region this color is not even visible that's not good let's try pink huh? this region and this region it's the weakest magnetic field because the the iron filings are far away from each other is it clear everyone yes okay cool then you should write it down All right. Should I go forward then? Yes, sir. Okay, very, very cool. Now, so um, then let's talk about something like hmm, interesting how to make an electro magnet okay in fact let's not talk about this let's talk about how are permanent magnets made first so the first method is called the stroking by a permanent magnet so what you're going to do is you take a magnet take a piece let's suppose a steel bar and then you got to have a permanent magnet and then you stroke it like this that it only touches one end by one pole of the magnet okay okay so you can write an existing permanent magnet is stroked 
from one end of bar of metal preferably you know this to be magnetized to the other end then the process is repeated in the same direction avoiding the other pole to touch the metal after several tries the metal will gain properties of a permanent magnet all right like what i'm saying is what you're going to do is you're going to okay you're going to stroke it like this do you guys understand Yes, sir. And keep on doing that for a very long time. Very redundant process, but it will cause it to become magnetized. Then, if you guys have written, I can go forward. Yes. Sir, can you wait for a while? Yes, yes, sure. Sure, sure, sure. You can do it. Take your time. Sir, you can move on. Okay, that's great. All right. So the next method is basically using a solenoid. It's part of an, uh, it's called electro magnets. We're creating that. So let's talk about this then. Why are we working offline? Do you guys can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so what you're going to do is, you're going to use a solenoid. Solenoid is basically Oh, just a coil. So it should look like a coil like that. Okay. So the coil is like like this. You're gonna learn about this more later. But just for now, we connect it with 
say a positive and negative terminal and then we place the metal that we want to magnetize inside like that so that's the metal that's the solenoid and then current which goes from positive to negative goes like behind and then comes forward like this due to this when the current moves you're going to learn this later on as well the current creates a north pole on this side and a south pole on this side this has a rule that we follow we're going to learn that and eventually for a very after a very short period of time depending on how strong the current is the metal gets this okay now i want you to just uh, make a switch as well so this is when the switch is closed and then we're going to copy this drawing and then we're going to paste it here right and then when the switch is open okay tough job for me but i'll do it Then you copy this again and paste it here. Okay, that's not fair. Let's move it right here. Okay. Now, <coughs> now the thing is that <coughs> when the switch is open, so when the switch is closed, we're going to write that the moving current creates a magnetic field the metal now becomes an induced magnet which means that it can you know attract things and do everything like that now when if this metal is steel so when switch is closed the steel bar retains magnetic poles as now it can it is it has become a permanent magnet however if the metal is iron oh when the switch is open please sorry my bad in the switch is opened the iron bar loses the poles as iron is a soft magnetic material and does not retain magnetic properties. Is it clear everyone? Magnetic poles in fact. So that's the biggest difference, right? So steel becomes a permanent magnet that you can use to, you know, do other stuff. So the uses of a permanent magnet are number one 
can be used in loudspeaker circuit breakers oh we, we can't use any circuit breakers in cd or cassette players etc okay the uses of electromagnet like this are that it can be used in metal junkyards to move scrap from one point to another basically what happens is we can turn on the electricity we can make it a magnet we can pull things up and then wherever we want to you know dump it we stop the current and it just becomes just normal metal it just dumps that do you understand this yes sir in circuit breakers and there are other examples as well but the thing is that I just wanted to give you that if they ask you, you can always write this. Is it clear, everybody? Any questions now? No questions, sir. All right. Cool. When you're done writing, please let me know so I can go forward. Uh, in about like, I don't know, four minutes, you guys need to rejoin. All right, Zainab, everything is clear? Rabia? Yusra? Yes, sir. Zain? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, should I go forward now? Yes, sir. So now the next yes, question sir. is how to demagnetize a permanent magnet. So there's a magnet you want to destroy, 
what to do. So the first thing you want to do is you got to burn it. Okay. Increasing temperature causes vibrations within the metal which result in disturbance of the magnetic poles that's how you can do it right the second thing is you hammer it beat it out so for that hammering increases the vibrations within the metal which will cause disturbance in the poles of magnets. So once they're disturbed, then of course, you can't use them again. The third thing is using a solenoid with alternating current. We already done alternate current. so. Okay. So in this one, we got to use uh, AC supply. We place a magnet inside. We give AC supply. So what AC supply does is that in in one like portion of second, it's uh, you know sending current in this way, and on the other like other half, it sends the current in the opposite way because it keeps on changing the direction, right? So. AC supply keeps on switching the poles on the permanent magnet. This alone cannot demagnetize a magnet but if we slowly pull it out it will cause a disturbance within 
the magnet. It will lose the magnetic poles. All right, so we need to slowly pull it out now or we can also slowly reduce the current in the coil so both ways basically you can uh, just demagnetize it so one of the ways is that you keep ac supply on and then you pull it out the other way is that you can you know reduce the current to zero but the thing is that if you keep like if you do not do that you don't uh, you know turn the current down or basically you don't pull it out whenever you're going to stop it it's going to keep the poles there on whichever side they were so basically it will not affect anything unless you do the other two points is it clear everyone yes sir and this is this is the end of this chapter so please write this down tomorrow we're going to do a worksheet for this I guess I'm going to see you people in the next class then.